Oracle free tier questions and answers. So today I'm going to be trying to answer a lot of the questions people have raised on Oracle's free tier. I've been using Oracle free tier myself since February, so about 10 months. It's been great for a free service. Um, I've used it for a few different things, but I'm going to go through a few of your common questions here. About three weeks ago, we made the Oracle free tutorial there where I used Ampere ARM processors to set up that free um, AA panel running WordPress. I did a similar tutorial a while back, four months ago, um, where I used CyberPanel and Open Lightspeed on the AMD microprocessor. So a couple of tutorials already um, have raised a lot of questions. Uh, this one has over five or 600 comments now. So lots of questions. The first time I haven't really been able to answer all of them because it's just so many on there, but it's been great. Uh, lots of new viewers, lots of new subscribers. So hi to you guys. Uh, thanks for joining us here in Ideas. But uh, let's go through some of those questions. So the first and most obvious one, is it really always free? Yes, it's really always free. How and why? We'll talk a little bit more about that later, um, but definitely always free. I've been having a good time on the always free services with Oracle. Um, there are some common uh, issues that people get when they try to sign up. So I'll figure out uh, how you troubleshoot most of those uh, later in the video. Uh, other uses, obviously most of my videos have been about WordPress. I do do other videos occasionally, but people have asked about running Node, about running game servers, Nextcloud, using a an open VPN um, and other ideas you could use this VPS for. So there's lots of um, tutorials that you can follow um, to set up these kind of things. There'll be lots of links in the description as well, but um, I'll be referring to lots of different um, web pages for tutorials on these things later in the video. Um, options for email hosting. So port 25 is blocked. You'll need another service to run your email through, but that's pretty easy to do. I'll give you a few options later for that one. Um, a few of you asked about using Nginx or Open Lightspeed for your web pages rather than Apache that we used in the last tutorial. So I've got some options for Nginx. I haven't been able to get Open Lightspeed working on Ampere. It does work on AMD, but if you want to use the Ampere option, um, I've got a good choice for Nginx that I'll talk about later. And if you can't get onto the Oracle free tier at all, let's talk a little bit about um, AWS Educate um, rather than using this if you just want to um, get started doing a little bit of web development. But Anyway, let's get started on this video. Um, I'm Alex from Ideaspot, obviously. Uh, let's get going. Okay, first up, Oracle Cloud always free. So you get always free services on Oracle Cloud. These are services that you can use for an unlimited time. A lot of you were confused is it always free or is it a 30 day trial? So you get two things you get the always free services and you also get a 30 day free trial as well. So you can use $300 worth of credit in the first 30 days. You can set up really big, powerful services like um, 16 Oracle CPUs with 96 gigabytes of RAM. That'll only work for 30 days, but after 30 days, you still get access to the unlimited always free cloud services. So everything we did in that previous tutorial, we used the always free services. So I've done that tutorial. I did a previous tutorial there, free VPS hosting, where I used the AMD, on that one, I use the Ampere, but both of those tutorials, always free services. I've been using it myself since um, since February this year. So February 2021, uh, much longer than 30 days. I've been using it like nine or 10 months or so now. So uh, never been billed, um, totally always free from my experience anyway. So uh, what you actually get in terms of resources, you get those two AMD, they're one eighth of an Oracle CPU and you get the Ampere um, four Oracle CPUs, 24 gigabytes of memory, 200 gigabytes of NVMe storage. Someone asked about bandwidth, outbound data transfer is limited to 10 terabytes per month, which is huge for most web applications. You're never gonna get even near that, even if you get like a million uh, users uh, hitting your site in a month, you probably won't get anywhere close to 10 terabytes. So that is pretty generous. So in conclusion there, yes, it is always free. Everything we did was using the always free services. You can use extra services if you want, but you only get those for 30 days. It's not unusual for large scale providers to have free services. Google Cloud Platform has a free tier. Uh, Amazon AWS has a free tier as well. So I've used those in the past. I think the Oracle Cloud one gives you more resources, but very similar idea very large scale providers want to get people uh, experienced on their platform. So they give away some of their uh, infrastructure service for free. When you have signed up on Oracle Cloud, you'll notice that you get your uh, purple header there that you're using a free tier account. So as long as you've got that there, you've got nothing to worry about. You're never going to get a bill as long as you've got that there. You have to intentionally upgrade to a paid account. 
to ever get uh, any charges. So just make sure you've got that there. If you've got that uh, up the top, you're all good. Um, if you go to your image and shape, you'll notice that you're always free eligible next to the um, image and shape. So with our shape, if we look, click on change shape there, we'll see that specialty in previous generation, you can get access to a uh, AMD Epic 2 gigahertz, and that's always free eligible. The other one is the Ampere one that we did as well. So that one actually allows you to increase the Oracle CPUs and the memory on there as well. So you can adjust your number of Oracle CPUs and gigabytes of memory. So sometimes if you don't manage to get all four Oracle CPUs and 24, try and drop it back, maybe try four and eight gigabytes of RAM, just to see if that's available, because sometimes there's um, availability issues and it's not always there. Also, if you can't get the Ampere, just go for the um, AMD Micro. You may be able to get that while you're waiting for um, some Ampere capacity free up. So not always um, possible to get the free tier in every region all of the time. They do mention this on the free tier FAQ. So I'll post that link in the description, but it'll say um, out of host capacity. I did actually get that error in my first tutorial. I got an out of host capacity for the Ampere. So I used the micro AMD in that example. So check that one out as well if you haven't already. Um, but back on the FAQ, it just says um, in your home region, Oracle will provide um, more capacity after several days. So Again, I think if you were, you were looking to select a region, because you only get one chance at selecting a region, I would choose a US region. I think these probably have the most capacity, so Ashburn, Phoenix, or San Jose. If you haven't signed up yet, I'd probably be tempted to choose one of those. Give yourself more chance of getting the maximum free resources. The other question I was getting a lot in the comments was about the credit cards and debit cards. So they talk about that in the FAQ here as well. So you do need to provide a credit card or a debit card just to uh, ensure that account holders are real people. So what they're just trying to do is uh, minimize the amount of abuse or malicious use that you might get when you offer a free service like this. Um, just make sure that it's real people and you're not getting a large number of multiple accounts as well, just to limit the amount of uh, abuse in terms of that. Um, and you may see a charge of $1. It's just a verification charge that they'll put on there. And that uh, verification hold, it'll be removed within three to five days. So a few of you asked about that, you might get a temporary $1 or $1 equivalent in your currency. Um, and that'll be returned in three to five days. So um, yeah, don't be, don't be worried. I know a few of you are in developing countries and um, $1 might be a bit of a shock, but again, don't stress. It's a temporary authorization hold just to make sure that um, it's a uh, real card, real person behind it. So just, just in terms of their own security. A lot of you were wondering how or why these large tech companies give free services away. Why on earth would they do that? The best answer I ever saw on this issue was from Matthew Prince. He's the Cloudflare CEO. So um, two of the main reasons is it's basically marketing. So customer referrals and employee referrals. So as you're young, you're using um, these free services for your hobbies and projects, personal projects. And as you grow up, you become a senior developer, a senior engineer, you'll take that experience into your future workplace and end up implementing these brands in your own workplace. Your workplace can become a enterprise customer of these tech companies. Very valuable marketing in that regard. Same as their own employee referrals. Um, a lot of people will apply to work at the places that they like using. If you like using Google Cloud, a lot of people want to work at Google. Same thing with Oracle. If you're familiar with their services and you're experienced, you'll probably try um, to work at the places that you like working with their systems. So if you give those systems away for free, you'll get access to um, a better pool of engineers, a better pool of developers than you would otherwise. So very good recruiting tool. The other thing is uh, software scaling, hardware scaling. One of the hardest problems in software development is doing things at these very large production scales. This gives their own engineers and developers experience managing those kind of systems without the same uh, stress of if it was paying customers. They can test out ideas on the free tier. And so it's not exactly... Uh, a resource for you that's completely free. They're using you as a resource to test their own systems and scaling and uh, doing things at large scale. So this is one of the big things that they'll benefit from um, besides you benefiting. So that's a really nice thing as well. Um, same thing 
with the data protection as well. As you bring in all these um, inexperienced hobbyists on your free tier, they're going to put their janky little apps and projects on there. It's going to attract security vulnerabilities. They'll get a lot of experience dealing with um, those kind of issues as well. So it, it gives them uh, particular experiences they wouldn't get otherwise. And the mode of failure is not as severe if something fails on free tier as if uh, something fails on Oracle. Oracle actually use um, their services on very critical business applications, a lot of payroll services, financial services are running on Oracle systems. So they want to make sure that they've experienced all the kinds of vulnerabilities and possible attacks that could possibly happen. They want to be prepared. One of the ways they do it is by offering a free tier environment and just testing out uh, those kind of systems. So that's a really nice thing that they do as well. This other concept of bandwidth chicken and egg is very interesting as well. Um, in order to get good pricing scale at large scales, you need to be able to scale, obviously. So they do that by offering free stuff. They can scale up. As you scale up, you can negotiate better peer-to-peer um, contracts with telecommunication services. You can get much cheaper bandwidth, uh, much cheaper network costs as you scale up. It actually reduces their pricing as they scale up and they can actually use their extra capacity on things like free tier. So it, lots of good reasons why these large scale companies would use a free tier that don't apply to small or medium businesses. So that's why we don't really think about it as we are hobbyists or um, getting started in this industry, we can't really um, experience these kind of issues, but at a very large scale, uh, there's very good reasons for offering a free tier. All right, so a few of you have had issues signing up or signing in. They do have that chat in the corner there. I don't think that's particularly helpful, but the few tips I would give you are, uh, make sure all your sign up information is legit and truthful. Make sure all your address details match up with your card and your phone number. All that stuff needs to be legit. Um, make sure you're not trying to spoof your location. Don't use fake info. Um, if you're using a VPN, turn that off. Um, use a regular IP address in the um, the proper location that you're trying to sign up from. Just make sure it's as transparent as and as legitimate as possible as you're signing up. They really want to avoid any um, fraudulent use and misuse of their services. So just make sure um, you do all that and you've got a better chance of getting through that sign up process because it can be a little bit tricky. I had a lot of questions about other uses. So I used this for um, AA panel running WordPress in my previous tutorial. I used it for cyber panel and WordPress um, in the earliest tutorial on the AMD. But there's lots of tutorials on the Oracle Cloud um, infrastructure documentation. So you can set up, um, uh, there's Flask, there is Node there, there is... Um, WordPress on Ubuntu, obviously, Apache, and the developer blog has lots of cool stuff as well. So game servers, you've got CSGO, you've got um, Node on there, the developer's blog as well. Uh, OpenVPN is a great way of using it as well. Um, uh, you can use Ghost as a headless CMS rather than WordPress. Ghost is pretty cool. Um, tutorial on that. Uh, they've got Rocket Chat tutorial. I've used Oracle to set up uh, Nextcloud on Ubuntu. So Snapcraft IO install Nextcloud. I've done this in the past. It's been a really nice way of um, serving your own photos and um, videos, documents and stuff rather than using uh, Google Drive or uh, OneDrive or iCloud. Um, get your own open source cloud that you run by yourself really nice technical exercise um, just a few commands to set that up that was pretty easy i'll share links to all this stuff in the description if you're interested in any of those tutorials and if there's enough interest in one of them i might consider making another video as well so let me know in the comments what you're interested in so um, moving on Email is an issue here. So Outbound SMTP is blocked. So that's port 25. You're not going to be able to run SMTP on here. Um, that's pretty common on a lot of providers. You probably, the provider you're on now is blocked port 25. It's just to prevent spammers coming on here and spamming the place up. If you're looking for a free email solution, I've covered that on the channel plenty of times before you can use where we got some email tutorials down here. Uh, Gmail custom email tutorial there. You can set up a mailbox with a custom domain name. And I've got a method in that video there. And I have got a um, SMTP tutorial with uh, send in blue on this one here as well. The other really good one is Zoho. It gives you a custom um, business email email box for free as well. So you can set up free email on your domain a number of ways. So um, Send in Blue is really cool. Uh, you can use Gmail SMTP server as well. That's a little bit more complicated. I'll rather use Send in Blue for beginners. Um, 
Gmail SMTP is free as well. Um, you got Zoho Mail and uh, forwardemail.net. You can forward an email to wherever you want, to which, whichever email you've got for free. And um, that's all free and open source. I've covered that on the tutorial I did earlier with um, custom email there on Gmail, but you can use that on Yahoo or whatever, really. Um, so that is forwardemail.net. Now, a few of you run um, commercial agencies. You just want a good supplier for bulk email boxes. Um, MX Route is the one that um, most people uh, enjoy using. They've got a Black Friday sale on still. Um, but yeah, I think it's like 10 bucks a year. Um, might be $15 a year during normal pricing, but unlimited domains, unlimited emails. Um, this is legit, um, really good, reliable source of bulk email. So if you're interested in that, that's a small price, but otherwise those free options that I mentioned earlier are pretty good as well. Try those out if you just need a small solution. The other thing that's really nice is um, actually iCloud Mail came up with, um, if you've got iCloud Plus, iCloud Plus is only around a dollar a month now and you can use a custom email domain. This is super reliable, um, super trustworthy, run through Apple. So that is only about a dollar compared to using, I think Microsoft and Google around five or six dollars a month. This came out this year. Um, you can use a custom domain with um, iCloud if you're into that. But for email, I definitely recommend Microsoft, Google, or Apple these days. If you actually want to land in someone's inbox, not in the spam or the promotion folder, um, use something legit. Uh, if it's a business or something serious, use something serious. Obviously, don't try to use some janky little free option. As they say, sometimes the cheapest way can end up being the most expensive. So just keep that in mind. Um, finally, I used AA panel in the last tutorial. Uh, that worked okay on Ampere. The other option, because this was using Apache, a few of you would rather use Open Lightspeed or Nginx. Um, I tried Webinarly the other day on Ampere. This worked just fine. This is webinarly.com install. You'll get a Nginx set up. It's about five commands to set that up. I'll link that in the description, but you'll get um, a pretty easy to set up Nginx WordPress stack. You can use that not just for WordPress, you can use it to run um, Java, Vue, React, Node, Angular, etc. on there as well. So um, lots of other applications you can use for Webinarly, and that's Nginx rather than uh, Apache. So check that one out too. Finally, for those of you with no way of accessing any of these free tiers things, because um, for whatever reason you don't get access, you could try, um, if you're a student, um, you might be able to get access to AWS Educate so you can get some um, some free services as well if you can't uh, use one of these commercial free tiers. But um, that's another option if you get desperate. Finally, if you've made it to the end here, my name is Alex. I've been making these videos for a couple of years now. I do focus particularly on free products. Um, this is by far my most popular video now, the Oracle free um, setup there. So thanks for watching it. Um, if you're a new subscriber, thanks for joining us. Um, hi to all my old subscribers too. Thanks for getting the channel to where it is today. I think it's it's growing quite nicely now. So thanks for that very much. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments if there's anything else I haven't covered or you'd like to see in the future. Um, it's been great. I've had a great time doing all this stuff with you guys. So um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.